According to theallknowingwikipedia.com, water parks were first introduced around the late 1940s and early 50s. And since then, their popularity has grown exponentially. The U.S. alone, which dominates the water park market, has over 1,000 water parks and dozens of new parks still opening each year. Not unlike amusement park connoisseurs, water park goers likewise place a lot of trust when visiting any given park. Wikipedia goes on to point out that over 4,200 people are sent to emergency rooms each year as a result of injuries they've suffered on public water slides. Perhaps one of the most tragic aspects of this accident is that by all accounts I have come across, this was an accident that should have been foreseeable and thus preventable. One Sunday in August of 2016, Scott Schwab, a Kansas legislator, had decided to spend a fun afternoon at the famous 40-acre Schlitterbahn Water Park in Kansas City, Kansas. You see, this particular water park wasn't just your average old run-of-the-mill water park. This park boasted what was at the time the world's tallest water slide. Ask the locals and they'd probably attest for the fact that people would often just drive by the water park to get a glimpse of the colossal structure. It is insane, and that's actually what it's called. It's called Baruch, which is... Uh... There's only one question to ask. Are you insane? Designed by 63-year-old Jeff Henry, the Baruch, which means insane in German, stands a whopping 116 feet, 7 inches tall, which beats even Niagara Falls in height. The ride itself works as follows. Three passengers climb into a rubber raft, one behind the other, and are strapped in with safety belts. They're immediately sent plummeting down the first drop, which is a 17-story nearly vertical drop during which riders reach speeds of nearly 70 miles per hour. After the raft reaches the bottom, it is supposed to go speeding up another second smaller 50-foot ramp before it goes down its final slope and at last comes to rest inside a water-filled dugout. Like most other 10-year-old boys, Scott's son, Caleb Schwab, was probably giddy with anticipation at the thought of getting to finally ride this famous world's tallest water slide. It is 264 steps to the top, but young Caleb was unlikely faced by any of that. Pretty soon, he'd be experiencing the thrill of his life as he soared down the gargantuan slide at insane speeds. Baruch was park co-owner Jeffrey Henry's crowning achievement. It had opened in 2014 to rave reviews. I always set out to break all the records. I want to be the first to hit the bar to buy a drink, and I want to be the first to meet a pretty girl, and I want to be the first at everything, and I want to have the biggest, the tallest, and the fastest rides in my parks. The next one I build is going to be twice as big, and then the one after that is going to be even bigger than that. There was no reason for Caleb nor his family to think that anything could or would go wrong. But it did. And not just a little wrong, but a lot wrong. Presumably following all routine protocol, when it came time for Caleb to board his raft, he was strapped into the front of the three seats. Behind him were two women he didn't know, sisters, but all were there for the same reason, a fun and wild time. The ride was only 18 seconds in duration, but as it would turn out, the next 18 seconds would be the 18 seconds that, for all members of the Schwab family, would remain engraved in their minds for as long as they live. Kermit investigators can now confirm Caleb Schwab was decapitated by the Verrucht slide at KCK's Schlitterbahn Park. I spoke with a mid-Missouri man who was at the park at the time. We just heard this loud 
cracking noise almost. And so we all looked and we saw that there was the supports that hold the netting in place that's over the slide. A couple of them were all bent and jagged out of place. My mom saw the two people on the other, uh, behind the second and third row seats and they were just covered in blood. It was horrible. The first part of the ride, the 17 story drop, went without incident. It was only after that, when instead of the raft remaining in its fiberglass flume and ascending smoothly up the second hill, it would become airborne, lifting along with itself all three of its passengers and bringing them in dangerously close proximity with a netted enclosure designed to keep any of the rafts from ever derailing. At this point, Caleb's head would come into contact with that semicircular hoop that arced over the top of the slide at consistent intervals, the purpose of these arcs, of course, being to secure the safety net in place. Upon colliding with this metal hoop, the result could only prove to be disastrous. As he and the hoop came into contact, Caleb became instantly decapitated. Both his head and his body were subsequently catapulted out of the raft and flung from the ride, coming to land at last in a chute located nearby the ride's finale. Park attendees saw the boy's body in the chute and started screaming hysterically. Upon realizing who the victim was, people present did what they could to prevent Caleb's mother from getting close enough to lay eyes on her own son's decapitated body and disembodied head. Caleb's father, Scott, perhaps sums up the tragedy most succinctly when he tells an ABC News reporter the following. Six went to the park and five came back. Six went to the park and five came back. Naturally, an investigation into the matter would later ensue, and three men would subsequently be indicted criminally for Caleb's death. A 20-count indictment says water park executives ignored warnings, destroyed documents, and skirted basic engineering flaws, and forged ahead with the grand opening anyway. The charge that co-owner Jeff Henry would receive? Second-degree murder. Allegations in a nutshell were that the owners should have been well aware that this ride posed some serious safety risks. And Henry, it seemed, would stand behind his construction, the behemoth water slide that didn't just take little Caleb's life in a most gruesome manner, but that had also grotesquely injured more than a handful of other riders prior to Caleb's harrowing decapitation. But perhaps naturally, the team at Schlitterbahn, Kansas, however, would seek to fight the allegations. Even though Jeff Henry would insist that all rules had been followed, various whistleblowers would come forward to testify that the park indeed knew that the rafts on the Verrucht were prone to becoming airborne during the ride. That, among other things. One employee who wished to remain anonymous went on to tell ABC about the numerous problems she witnessed firsthand. By what she described as a lack of training for employees, she also blamed inadequate safety inspections by the park's own employees. But this wasn't all. Nathan Campbell was a lifeguard at the park. The indictment says that every morning, employees like him would be asked to volunteer to test the ride. The brakes just didn't work, so we never stopped and just kept going and hit the very end of the ride and flipped off. He says he was lightly hurt in his back, but was able to walk away. I never wanted to be close to it, on it, work for it. I didn't want to like be even close to it because that happened. Brittany Hawkins was celebrating her birthday at the park when she, too, had a close call on the Verruck. You're speeding down this hill and you can't really get your balance. And the raft went airborne and I was actually flown up and my seatbelt came off. Brittany says she was terrified. We were going up that little hill, that second hill, and um, the gravity, again, lifted the raft and went flying down. And that's when I came crashing down on my back and couldn't move. I had um, three slip discs in my back. Uh, that still give me trouble today. Furthermore, it said that Henry rushed to get the project done so that he could schmooze the travel channel and thereby meet a deadline for his beloved Verrucht to appear in a series quite aptly titled Extreme Water Parks. Some sources have also revealed that he neglected to consult with one single engineer while erecting the mammoth water slide. On the second hand, the piece done by the travel channel apparently would reveal that Henry did consult with engineers, perhaps many of them. He just didn't like what any of them had to say. In mind throughout the designing, building, and rebuilding of Baruch. There we go. Third one. They've been reaching out for mathematical, physical, and engineering advice. All been completely wrong. Every bit of advice we've been given from the brightest brains and the smartest engineers, mathematicians, uh, just have not been correct. But unfortunately for Caleb's family, 
as well as for the young victim himself. In a perhaps stunning move, in February 2019, roughly three whole years after Caleb's death, all charges would be dropped in the case against the Schlitterbahn Park owners. The judge would decide this based on his belief that the case had been, quote-unquote, irreparably tainted, and that the grand jury could potentially be swayed by certain misleading evidence that, sadly, had made its way into the courtroom. Therefore, Jeff Henry would walk away a free man. As for the water slide itself, while the Schlitterbahn Park in Kansas City would reopen in as little as three days following the boy's death, the Vrucht, once Jeff Henry's pride and joy, was ordered that it be demolished. Despite the criminal charges being dropped, it perhaps should be noted that Caleb Schwab's family still received about $20 million in settlements. It's a lot of money, but perhaps not so much when you consider the life of a child to be priceless. In the aftermath of this tragedy, one only needs to look at Caleb's parents' faces to see that although they seem to be helping each other hold together as a family, their grieving is still far from over. I'm pretty sure that I do speak for all in wishing the best for Caleb's family in the years left to come. And that, guys and girls, pretty much concludes what we know about the tragedy, also known as the story of the Verrucht. Pretty great in theory, but terrible in practice. Let me know in the comments section what you yourself think about this story, if you feel like weighing in. Do return for our next installment, which should be up fairly soon. This is Anna signing out for now. Have a great day. But you're saying it is safe. Oh, yeah. This ride is probably the safest speed slide that's ever been built. It's been tested. It's been evaluated. Park, Kansas City. Get discounted tickets at Schlitterbahn.com. Let's go.